new air fryer and you're just not sure what to make in it, I've got you. Keep watching for 15 things that are perfect for beginners. And the best part is you're gonna save time because the air fryer, it cooks faster and it won't heat up your kitchen on hot summer days. My name is Kathy and I am your air fryer queen. Now let's start with the healthy stuff. Vegetables are a perfect side dish to cook up in your air fryer. For example, try roasting asparagus. Just prep your asparagus and place it right inside the air fryer. Lightly mist it with oil, throw on some salt and pepper, and then you're gonna air fry it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius for about six to eight minutes, just depending on how soft you like your asparagus. Or you can do corn on the cob. You'll cook that for about eight to 10 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. Just make sure you kind of rotate that corn in the middle of cooking. Or you can do a personal favorite of mine, frozen broccoli. You're gonna do that at 300 for 10 minutes. You can also do things like Brussels sprouts, carrots, zucchini. There are so many possibilities with your vegetables. Now I know I'm going fast, but don't worry, I'm gonna tell you how you can get a free printable with all of the times and temperatures for all of these recipes, plus more at the end of this video. So keep watching. Now if you're like most people, you love bacon. You have got to try cooking it in your air fryer. It is so fast, it's so convenient, and it's way less messy than trying to cook it on your stove top. Now personally, I like to use a little foil on the bottom underneath the basket, that's gonna catch all the grease and it makes cleanup so much easier. Some people have air fryers that tend to smoke a bit when they're cooking greasy foods. If that's you, then just get a little piece of bread, rip it in half, put it underneath the basket. That's gonna help catch all those grease drippings and make it so your air fryer does not smoke. Then you can go ahead and lay the bacon down side by side in the air fryer, but if you're a lazy cook kinda like me, you can just throw the whole slab right inside the air fryer basket. I like to cook bacon at 380 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius for about eight to 10 minutes. In most air fryers, you might need to rotate your bacon halfway through cooking. If you're doing a big blob like me, then you just use your tongs, separate it out a little bit, and then let it finish cooking. Depending on how crispy you like your bacon, it's gonna take anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. Then you just let that grease cool down just a smidge. You can lift the foil out and throw it away. Or if you didn't use foil, just wipe up all that grease with paper towel and then soak your pan in some hot soapy water. It's so easy and so darn good. Now you can make some amazing proteins in the air fryer too. Check out these chicken BLT burritos. Preheat the air fryer to 380. I'm gonna show you what to do for like one or two people only. I've got some little thought out chicken tenders and I'm just placing them right in half of the air fryer. And I'm gonna throw in a couple slices of bacon. I'm gonna place those right next to each other. And then I'm gonna just season it with this yummy organic garlic pepper from Redmond Real Salt. You could just use salt and pepper if you want. And then I'm just going to lightly mist that chicken here. Then I'm gonna just cook this at 380 and I'm gonna start with 10 minutes. Now we're gonna make a yummy dipping sauce. You need about two thirds cup of sour cream, which is also apparently about 130 grams. And then two tablespoons of your favorite barbecue sauce. I'm just eyeballing. And wow, that looks like ice cream with hot fudge, right? Well, I forgot to hit record, but I added a half teaspoon chili powder and another half teaspoon of cumin. And I did a little splash with salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna stir this up to make an amazing sauce for these burritos. Okay, I forgot to turn that shake reminder on, but here we go. That bacon's been going for five minutes and pretty nice and crispy for me. So I'm gonna pull the bacon out. I'll just let that sit on a paper towel and I'll just take a quick reading on that chicken. It is almost done. I'm just gonna quickly flip these and I think I'll season them on the other side and that will finish up cooking, but I don't wanna go that full three minutes, so look, I can just change the time right here while it's running. Chicken is done. So I'll let that rest for just a minute, and if you like your tortillas warm, just get a little paper towel, wipe out your pan if it's dirty. I'm gonna pop those right in, set my rack on top. I'm gonna run it at 350 for two minutes. And now those tortillas, they are nice and warm. And while that was cooking, I just prepped some veggies here. Now I'm just gonna spread some of that delicious sauce on top. Add a chicken tender, a little bacon slice, some lettuce, avocado, tomatoes. So the cool thing about these is like, this one doesn't want tomatoes, so you don't have to add tomatoes, right? They're cute. This one's gotta be my favorite because it's so easy to make. You love it? Yeah, 10. 10 out of five, all right. All right, what do you say, sissy? I would say it's 
kind of a hard choice. Did you love it or did you like it? I kind of like it. You like it, so three or four? Yeah. Three or four, let's go with a four. Should we go with a four? Yeah. Four all the way, enjoy this one. Mm. By the way, if you're feeling nervous about using your air fryer and you really want someone to coach you through that learning curve, be sure to sign up for my air fryer bootcamp. Go to airfryerbootcamp.com, sign up, and I will email you as soon as doors open. Now, teriyaki chicken and stir fry veggies is incredibly easy and it's an all-in-one air fryer meal that anyone can make. So I've got some chicken breast thawing and I just went and picked out some vegetables that I like and I thought, hey, since I'm doing teriyaki, I thought it'd be kind of cool to see what happens with this stir fry mixture. Now you can do store-bought teriyaki sauce, but I'm gonna make my own today. These are the ingredients I have. It's basically just a little marinade and it's gonna be divine. So for the sauce, we're gonna start out with some pineapple juice. Now you could just buy any canned pineapple and use the juice from it, or I usually grab this six pack of these cute little cans. You need a half cup of juice, then some low sodium soy sauce. You'll just need a third cup, one tablespoon of molasses. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Whoops, <laughs> there's a a tablespoon of brown sugar in there and one tablespoon of rice vinegar. You can use regular white vinegar if you don't have rice vinegar. And then you need about two cloves of garlic. I'm just using a teaspoon of the stuff in the jar and a quarter teaspoon of dried ginger. Then just whisk that all up together and you can see this made a cup of homemade teriyaki sauce. Now it's time to chop up your veggies. It doesn't really matter what size you do them in as long as you have them pretty uniform so they cook evenly. And boom, look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna drop all of that in the bowl. And you know what? That looks like enough. I don't think I'm even gonna dig into this one. I'll save this for another night. So I'm gonna just pour a little bit of the glaze over the top of the veggies and just stir that up so everybody gets some of that sauce coated on the veggies. Now here's where personal preference comes into play. If you like your veggies pretty crispy and crunchy, you're gonna just cook the chicken at the same time. But if you want your veggies a little more tender, we're gonna throw these in first. And to answer a couple of questions I've been getting, when you have holes in your basket, and you don't want stuff to leak out, these silicone pots work out pretty great. So I'm gonna use it today since I have that runny sauce in there. And I'm just gonna put my veggies right in here. These do come in different sizes and I list out all of the tools that I use at airfryertools.com. That'll take you to my Amazon shop and you can quickly find that. And I'm gonna crank this up to 380 and we're gonna start it out with about 10 minutes of cooking by itself. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the chicken breast. Now, these are slightly frozen, so it actually makes them easier to cut into these nice little strips. And I'm just cutting them in about half inch thick, which is pretty much the width of a finger. Then just drop your chicken into that same bowl, and I'm gonna pour some more of my teriyaki sauce. I do wanna leave a little bit that I can turn into a glaze to serve with the dinner. So it's gonna get a little bit of marinade time while those veggies start their cooking process. And by the way, you could use steak or even some pork instead of chicken. Okay, the veggies are done. Well, partially done. And they do look beautiful. Now you'll notice that I didn't put any oil in this glaze. If you want to, you could still spray oil on these, but it's really not necessary. There also wasn't any salt and pepper added, so you could salt and pepper to taste. We still have room here on the sides, so it is still getting airflow. Anyway, this is optional. You can totally do this recipe without this. And actually, just to show you both ways, I'm gonna go ahead and dump this out. Oh, that's hot just so you can see how doable this is. So now with my partially cooked veggies, I'm just gonna lay the chicken right on top of the veggies. Now my chicken breasts were fairly large, so I do have extra here. I could layer this in, it just would require a little more stirring and probably a little more time. So I think I can just work in batches because this will cook up really quickly all on its own. So I'm gonna pop this back in, and I'm gonna put it back at 380. This time we'll run it for eight more minutes. Okay, now you can see I've almost got a half cup of teriyaki sauce left. I'm gonna throw in about a teaspoon of cornstarch and just whisk that up. And then I'm literally just gonna microwave it. And we'll start with about a minute and a half. To make it even more of a meal, you could serve it over rice or even quinoa just to make it go a little further. And there we go. Boom, that sauce is perfectly done. Oh shoot, 
I was sitting here smelling it. it was smelling so good and then I realized oh I didn't turn on my flip reminder since that chicken's right on top of the veggies you do want to be sure to rotate that just so it cooks evenly on both sides but oh my goodness it's roasting and smelling so good I can't believe how easy this one is there we go we'll let that finish Right. Oh goodness, look at that. And we'll just check that internal temperature. Yep, we are just right where we need to be. I'm just gonna pour this prepared portion into a serving dish. Oh, that's so gorgeous. And I'm just gonna cover it to keep it nice and warm. And then same thing, this will only need eight minutes here at 380 and everything will be served nice and hot. And that chicken, I'm just gonna add it to the rest of it. And dinner is ready. Tastes pretty good mm. without. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that seasoning is something else. How many stars do you have this dinner? Me? Easily five. That's the easiest five ever. You gave it five? Well, four because I don't like that, but I like the chicken. Booyah. Can I eat all of this? Yes, you may. If you don't feel like standing at the grill, you have got to try these homemade hamburgers in the air fryer. Today I'm gonna use up a pound of ground beef, some garlic powder, pepper, salt, and Worcestershire sauce. I think seasoning your meat before you form the patties is just the way to go. So I've got a half teaspoon of the garlic powder, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and that was a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I just like to get my gloved hands and get right in there, mix it all up. It smells so good. And then with this one pound, you can form three patties if you want larger ones, or you could do four. And actually today, I'm just gonna make two patties and I'm gonna do something different with the rest of this meat. For hamburger patties, I really do like to preheat the air fryer and plus I just washed it so it's gonna dry the inside too. So of course the cook time is going to depend on how thick your patties are. I'm making mine a little bit thinner as you can see. Air fryer's ready. And there's a sizzle. Just pop that in. I am gonna bump this back to 380 and we'll start with four minutes. It's gonna take about six to eight minutes. It's just gonna depend on the doneness. Take a peek at these. They're looking good though. I'm gonna flip these and take a quick internal temp and look at that, they are done. So I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes and because I've gotta have the onion and the cheese. Oh, that's gonna be good. That's a lot of cheese. 380, let's give it two more minutes. There we go. Ah, of course, of course that would happen to me. But look at that one did well. I'm just gonna quickly wipe that out. Oh, it's quite messy, isn't it? I'll throw down a little parchment paper and I just wanna toast my bunsies real quick. Give it just a quick little mist and I'm gonna toast it for about four minutes at 350. The buns are done. Now we always make this huge batch of homemade fry sauce and I love it on my burgers. Got some garden fresh tomatoes and it's ready to go. Oh, look at that goodness. I can't wait to have a bite. There's nothing quite like a toasty bun, the yummy fry sauce, and a delicious burger. Now don't forget about all the sweet things you can make in your air fryer. Want to make just a few cookies? The air fryer is perfect for that. Now I personally prefer cookies on some foil, but you can use parchment paper too. I'm going to show you that in just a second. If you're going to use foil, be sure to leave room along the side so you have that airflow going through and spread the cookie dough around the foil so it'll hold everything down. If you want to use parchment paper, I suggest getting a wire rack over the cookies to keep that from blowing up. That way your cookies won't end up looking all mushed like this. Cook up your cookies at 320 degrees Fahrenheit for about eight minutes. And then here's the secret. You have to let them rest for at least 10, 15 minutes right there in the air fryer basket. Then they are gonna be perfectly moist, chewy, delicious, mmm, so good. Now I call these maple bars, but maybe you call them long johns or a cougar tail? Let me know what you call them in the comments below. Either way, they are so stinking good. First, you're gonna need some Grand's biscuits. Now you're gonna stretch out this little biscuit to make like a little oblong shape. You just want it to look like a, well, like a maple bar. For the maple glaze, you need a quarter cup of butter, one half cup of brown sugar, and three tablespoons of milk. Get it on the stove and set your temperature to medium. And you just want to whisk up all of those ingredients 
Stirring often so that butter melts and everything combines. Now that this is almost done, I'm gonna preheat my air fryer at 350 for about four minutes. Once it's all melted and combined, take it off the heat and add in a tablespoon of corn syrup and two teaspoons of maple extract. That smells amazing. Now just to give it a nice donut-y finish, I'm gonna just lightly mist and I'm placing oil side down in the air fryer and I'm gonna just give it a light mist on the other side. I'm gonna pop these in. We're gonna run it at 350 for just five minutes. Now I'm gonna add in two cups of powdered sugar, but I'm just gonna do a half cup at a time. You just want to make sure it's nice and smooth in between those additions. At first you're gonna be a little worried because it's gonna seem lumpy, but don't worry because by the time you get to that last half cup it's gonna be nice and thick. Now if your donuts are still cooking you do want to kind of keep this warm, so just put it on some low heat. That's gonna keep it from hardening up and if it's just like way too thick you can add in another tablespoon or two of milk. Time is up. Wow, look what happens in just five minutes. Then once they've cooled enough where you can just touch them but they're still warm, just grab your little maple bar, dip it right there in the frosting. Oh yummy, make sure everything is covered and just set it out so that glaze can harden. Taste test. Mm. Someone's God's excited. Goodness. No way. The frosting melts in your mouth like a lot. Oh my God. Mm. Plus you can make these in 15 minutes or less. I'm making this all the time. You're going to? Guess what? You can make it in 15 minutes or less. That one was the best. So the best? Mm. Your favorite. That tastes exactly like a maple donut. You know how much those cost? Normally, like if you went and bought that at the donut store, how much would that cost? Any idea? How much? Almost, I think three bucks, almost. What? Five stars for me. How many stars? No, seven out of five. Five stars for everyone. Ding, ding, ding. Now that's just a glimpse of the sweet things you can make in your air fryer. I've got a ton more in my cookbook. I also have more videos. I'm gonna link to those down in the description box below. But let's go back to those healthy proteins again. Here's something that's so easy, even your teenagers could do it. So we're gonna just heat up these refried beans and they are an excellent source of fiber and protein. We want them to be a little bit smoother, a little bit more runny consistency so they spread easily. So that's why I'm warming them up and you can throw a little water or since I have some chicken broth, I'm gonna use that. Just stir it up to heat it up and get everything blended nice and smooth. And if you have spices on hand, you can just add these if you want to. I'm doing a quarter teaspoon of each. Garlic powder, cumin, chili powder, some oregano, and I'm gonna throw in a little dash of salt. And we're gonna just lightly spray the basket. And I'm gonna shred up half of this brick of cheese. You should make about two cups. And then set out your tortillas. And go ahead and put some beans on each one. Throw in a little enchilada sauce. And then just load in the cheese, yum yum. Now you'll see I've got a ton of room here. That's because we are gonna fold in and then roll them up. Very nice. Then just give them another light mist over the top. Pop it in the air fryer, and then you're gonna run these at 350 for about anywhere from four to six minutes. So if you want it more crunchy and more toasty, one tip is to oil it a little bit more. Then you can crank it up to 400 and run it for like one or two more minutes. And there we go, delicious. Here comes a delicious bean and cheese burrito. Mm. I give that a four to five. I don't even like bean and cheese burritos, but this one was pretty good. Yay! Five out of five. Air fryer and bananas are so tasty. So I've got my ground beef here in the air fryer. This time I'm gonna add in that onion and pepper that I chopped up. They're just finely minced. And I told you how I like to do the seasonings at the halfway point, but with these minced veggies here, I do want them to get that full cook time. So let's pop them in. And remember, if you have the older model of the kasori, just click one of these top four buttons. That's gonna turn on the shake reminder. And then you can adjust the time and temperature. So I'm gonna go with seven minutes and we will stir it at the halfway point. While that's cooking, I'm gonna gather up my spices here. So I'm doing a half teaspoon of each. The cumin, garlic powder, 
oregano, and then a half teaspoon of each, salt, pepper, paprika, and some onion powder. Then we'll pop that in the meat here in just a second. All right, here we go. Let's take a peek. So I'm gonna just mix it up and pop it back in. All right, let's take a peek now. The veggies are looking more translucent. And some people wonder, why don't I take the temperature of ground beef? And that is just because I can usually just look. Like if you see pink, it's not all the way cooked. So definitely we need a few more minutes on this, but now is when I'm going to add in those spices. Just sprinkle those on top and let's stir that up. Oh, this is gonna be fantastic. I think we're good to throw this in for just about two more minutes. There we go. Does that ground beef smell so good? Does it, huh? Yes, it does smell good. And now it's looking just really nice. While I let that meat cool, I went ahead and cut up my French bread dough and I'm rolling them out so they're about the width of my hand here. To make it easier, I put my meat in this big bowl and I'm gonna add in four ounces or about a half cup of some tomato sauce. Throw in just a couple tablespoons of water. There we go. You will want to lightly spray your air fryer and place about two tablespoons of meat on half of the dough here. Maybe it was three, I don't know. Go ahead and fold that over. And what I'm learning is that this uh, French bread dough is really fluffy and just kind of bounces back up. So go ahead, whatever you have, your pie crust, this dough maybe just doesn't make it look super authentic, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna taste good. There we go. And just pop it right into your air fryer basket. Then just brush on a little egg wash. And we're gonna cook these at 350 for eight minutes. Okay, it's been about six minutes, maybe a little longer, and I decided to peek, and they really look like they are good and done. Now you could make up a whole bunch of these. You could eat them all up. You could freeze them for later, or you could just freeze your extra meat It'll be great for tacos. You could use it another night for empanadas. You could use it on a salad. Lots of options. It's so nice to have frozen cooked meat ready to go. I am so excited to give these a try. Mmm, good flavor. I think that the French bread dough probably was not the best choice. It sure makes it a little more chewy than probably like a pie crust would, but the filling is fantastic. So give this one a try. Skip the restaurant and make some amazing chicken wings right in your air fryer. I personally just use frozen chicken wings. Throw about two pounds in your basket. And at this point, it's totally fine if they're touching because they're gonna shrink as you air fry. These are gonna cook at 350 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. That's 175 Celsius. And this is just gonna thaw out the wings. Now they are thawed. You can rotate them around, unless you have the dual blades like I do, then you don't really have to. And just lightly season with some garlic salt and some pepper. Make sure you get both sides seasoned. There's no real measurement here. I just eyeball it or wing it rather. And I'm gonna crank it up to 380 and cook it for 25 minutes. And you'll wanna stir that around halfway through. Unless you have the Kasori Dual Blaze, which has a burner here and here, then no flipping is required. And then it looks like it's nice and done. Then just coat it with your favorite barbecue sauce. Got a little bit left of my homemade here. Once you have it coated, Crank that heat up and run it for just two to five more minutes to caramelize the sauce. Then they are cooked to perfection. Salmon is so tasty in the air fryer and there's only four ingredients in this recipe. Okay, for this one, you'll just need some salmon flays, mayonnaise, your favorite fishy seasoning. I'm gonna try this garlic and onion one again and then some shredded Parmesan cheese, but I just have quesadilla cheese today, so we're gonna roll with that. I've got my air fryer preheating, and I've got about a quarter cup of mayonnaise, and I'm just gonna add in about a teaspoon of that seasoning, and I'll just quickly stir that together. And I'm just putting my salmon right in the basket. I did pat that dry, and then just spread this mixture over the top of your salmon. You could use a brush if you want to, but I'm just gonna spoon it on here. And then just throw on a little cheese. Get a little bit more there. Pop it in the air fryer, and I'm using the little seafood preset, 350 for eight minutes. Let's check our temperature here. 145 is our target. Ooh, and these are 
Wow, perfect. Beautiful. Oh, yummy. The flavor of this one is amazing. Mmm. These ham and cheese sliders are ready in less than 15 minutes and they're so good. For these rolls, you're gonna just keep them all as one and carefully use a bread knife and just saw through those. It's gonna make everything just easier, I promise. Ta-da! Now it was broken in the bag, so yes, I do have four pieces, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and place those rolls. Just fit them snugly right into your air fryer basket. Then take the top off and you're gonna place four slices of cheese right on top of the rolls. And then get your deli ham and just spread that out on top of the cheese. You can really do as much or as little as you like. My little one got into the ham this weekend so I might be a little bit short, but I think we're okay. Then place four more slices of cheese on top. Then put the tops back on. And for that glaze, melt your stick of butter. Throw in two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, a tablespoon of poppy seeds, a teaspoon of onion powder, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a dash of pepper. And then just mix that up. By the way, if you don't like poppy seed or you think it's gonna freak your kids out or you just don't have it, this also is amazing without. And now for the really fun part, we're just gonna pour this right over these rolls, and you wanna just brush that through so it gets in all those little nooks and crannies. But don't be afraid to just dump all of that on here. I tell you what, it just makes it so good. This time I'm using the Kasori Pro 2, and I'm gonna bring that temp down to 330, and we'll run it for about 12 minutes. Okay, now check this out. Oh yeah. Can you hear how that it's nice and crackly kind of thing? Mm. And then you're just gonna wanna cut those apart. Okay. And how is it? It's very good. Mmm, that's yummy. These are my go-to super tasty brown sugar pork chops. For pork chops, I think it's cheaper to just buy a big pork loin. And I'm gonna just slice these just about an inch thick, which will be two finger widths. You can definitely go thinner if you want to. Just keep in mind, it will change the cook time. Now for the rub. Two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of paprika, two teaspoons of kosher salt, one and a half teaspoons of black pepper, one teaspoon of ground mustard, half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half teaspoon of onion powder. Then whisk that all up. Go ahead and pat your pork chops dry. And then I like to spray them with oil right now before I add the rub. Then just sprinkle on that delicious rub. Massage it in. This rub mixture will make plenty. So if you have extra pork chops, you can season up all of those too and just pop them in a freezer bag and just freeze them for another night. Okay, I did preheat this air fryer. Since my pork chops already have oil, I really don't need to spray the basket. And yes, it looks like I can squeeze five of them in here. So we'll pop that in. We're gonna crank it up to 400 and run it for 10 minutes. Oh, and I am gonna hit my shake reminder to remind me to flip those. All right, let's check these. All right, I lost footage of me flipping them, but I did flip them. And I usually like to just peek in on the temp and see how things are going. So 109, we wanna get to 145. So with just four minutes left, I think we're gonna be good on that time. All right, time is up. Woo! We'll do a quick check on the temp, and yep, I probably could have just cooked these for like eight minutes. Pork chops. Mm. She likes it. She's taking all of it. This one's a keeper. I've made this one a lot. It's so good. I love all of it. Just why I gave it a four is because it's a little mm -hmm. spicy. It's a little spicy. Yeah. It's probably the black pepper in there. We left the cayenne pepper out, so. Good, that's a winner, winner, winner. You made it to the end. Now remember, if you want me to coach you through that air fryer learning curve, go to airfryerbootcamp.com. And I promise I'd have a free printout for you with all the times and temperatures of the recipes that I talked to you about in this video. You can get that at yummyairfryerrecipes.com for slash quick. Just give me your email address and then I'll send it to you right away. Now I've got 17 of the best dinner ideas for you right here and check out this video right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.